Hi everyone, my name is Mike Abood. I'm one of the residents at the Harvard Affiliated Emergency Medicine Residency at Mass General and Brigham and Women's Hospital. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound guided nerve blocks of the wrist. If you've ever worked in an emergency department in the fast track, on a busy overnight you might get a couple patients like this. Perhaps someone who, you know, a young guy who was in a fight or got a little too drunk, had a broken bottle hit his hand and now has a large laceration. You know, he's in a lot of pain, you're going to need a lot of lidocaine to numb that up if you want to do local. And you might not have much subcutaneous uh, tissue to, to infiltrate there. So this might be someone who could benefit from a little bit of a, a regional nerve block. Someone else who could benefit might be this guy who has scalding oil injury uh, and partial thickness burns to his entire hand. This patient might need lots and lots of fentanyl and is still in 10 out of 10 pain. And you get to the point where having, he's having respiratory depression, but you still don't have any pain control. So these are the people you might want to bust out the ultrasound, bust out a needle, and a little bit of a, a local anesthetic, and uh, give them some uh, regional pain control. What we do here is we use the, the anatomy of the hand, particularly the median, radial, and ulnar nerves that run through the wrist, to give targeted anesthesia for either a procedure like a laceration repair, or for pain control for someone who is having a pain refractory to, to IV or oral meds. What you need for this, just a few different things. An ultrasound with a linear probe, some antiseptic to clean the, the wrist, as well as uh, your anesthetic, a needle, a syringe, and some gloves. Really, that's, that's all you need to, to get started. In terms of the nerves that innervate the hand, there are three main ones. Uh, starting on the most uh, medial or the ulnar aspect is the ulnar nerve. This innervates the, both the dorsal and the palmar aspects of the fifth digit and the, the ulnar aspect of the fourth digit. Beyond that is the median nerve. The median nerve innervates the, palm, the uh, palmar aspect of the th first three and a half digits, the thumb, the index, the middle finger, and the uh, radial aspect of the fourth digit. Now on the flip side of the median nerve is the radial nerve. That gets the dorsal aspect of those first three and a half digits. In order to anesthetize these nerves, we use uh, either a long or a short-acting anesthetic. The most common short-acting anesthetic is lidocaine, often 1 or 2 percent light out. We'll often use just a couple of cc's uh, per nerve that's anesthetized. Again, this is short-acting, lasts about 2 or 3 hours. And I've listed the, listed the toxic dose here just for your, uh, uh, your reference, but just remember that there's no way that you're going to be giving enough to have a toxic dose uh, in these uh, small nerve blocks. Bupivacaine, on the other hand, is a longer-acting anesthetic that can last uh, half to a full day. And again, um, you're not going to give uh, toxic doses. In terms of where you find these nerves, uh, you often find these within the flexor forearm using the linear probe. The ulnar nerve is living on the ulnar aspect of the ulnar artery. The median nerve is right in the middle of the wrist, whereas the radial nerve is radial to the radial artery. And it's important to note this is the most difficult to visualize, but I'll show you some tricks to find this in each of the other two nerves. Now, as I mentioned, the ulnar nerve is on the ulnar aspect of the ulnar artery. In order to find any nerve underneath the clavicle, what you're looking for is a hyperechoic honeycomb structure. And here, right in the middle of the screen, you see that artery, and just to the ulnar side, you'll see this hyperechoic region that, uh, that uh, represents the ulnar nerve. Here's a little more obvious picture. So again, our, uh, our artery is just to the left of the middle, and that hyperechoic honeycomb structure is your ulnar nerve. In order to anesthetize, we're going to use the in-plane approach. So what you're going to do is you're going to move up and down the forearm on the, the uh, distal aspect, uh, the distal half at least, to find the area where that nerve is the most obvious as well as farthest from the, the artery in order to make this the most safe and effective procedure possible. The idea is to envelop the nerve in the lidocaine or your anesthetic without actually injuring the nerve itself. So if you're advancing your needle toward that nerve, and your patient starts screaming out in pain because they're having shooting pain into their fourth and fifth digits, you're probably touching the nerve and should back up a little bit. In terms of the way to know that your, that your procedure is working, you start to inject your lidocaine as you approach the nerve. And as you'll see, this anechoic fluid, which is your anesthetic, starts to envelop the nerve and dissect the fascial planes. And over time, uh, as you uh, inject one, two, three cc's of lidocaine, you start to see that nerve really start to pop out. And once that nerve pops out and you can visualize it better, you'll know that you'll get good anesthesia. Here's another picture just to show how we can really dissect it from the fascial plane. Uh, 
The median nerve, as I mentioned, lives in the right in the middle of the flexor forearm. It's often more easily visualized, kind of uh, in the uh, in the middle of the wrist as opposed to the distal aspect. But again, it's important to move up and down the wrist uh, in order to find the spot where we can best see this hyperechoic uh, honeycomb-like structure right here. Again, for this procedure, you would use the in-plane approach, and you can advance from the ulnar or the radial aspect, whatever is easier for you, in order to make this procedure the safest and most effective possible. So again, right in the middle of the screen, we see this hyperechoic honeycomb structure. We'll advance our needle toward it and start to inject our lidocaine. The lidocaine will start to envelop around the nerve and let it uh, pop out from the fascial plane in order to, uh, to envelop it and give good anesthesia. Here's one more picture just to show that once you really start to envelop this nerve, it'll start to pop out in this circular honeycomb structure, and that's when you know you're going to get good anesthesia. Moving on to the, again, most difficult one to visualize is the radial nerve. So again, moving to the radial aspect of the hand, uh, you'll find it there. So just remember the path of the radial nerve. It moves uh, around the humerus and wraps around the humerus, down the radial aspect of the forearm, moving toward the hand where it dives deep to innervate the, uh, uh, the dorsal aspect of the hand. You'll find this just radial to the radial artery. And again, it's not as obvious to visualize as the ulnar or the median. It doesn't often look like a circular honeycomb structure. It's often sitting next to this uh, hyperechoic triangular shaped area. And uh, you just, uh, after looking a couple times on a different patients, you'll start to recognize what that radial nerve looks like. Again, we're going to move up and down the arm to find the spot that it's most easily visualized and farthest from the, nerve, from the artery in order to do this as safely and effectively as possible. Here's another picture of the, uh, the radial artery at the top of the screen in the radial nerve, just to the radial side of it. For this block, again, we'll use an in-plane approach, but we'll advance from the radial aspect in order to avoid that artery. Once we visualize our artery, we'll advance our needle and inject our lidocaine. And as you inject the lidocaine, you can see that that nerve, which wasn't totally apparent before, really starts to pop out and uh, then allows you to uh, effectively uh, envelop it and anesthetize that nerve. Just to kind of show you a little further, once we start to inject that lidocaine, this nerve is really going to start to uh, come out, and you'll see it uh, uh, dissect away from those fascial planes and allow you to, uh, to uh, kind of know, even before the patient has pain control, that you've done a successful procedure. My favorite part of doing these nerve blocks is that a lot of these patients, you know, and I, I've had several before, who have uh, big lacerations on their hand or burns, and they're, they're screaming and, and they're horrible pain. And with just a couple minutes and a couple cc's of lidocaine, you can take away their pain and allow them to uh, have a, a great experience in the emergency department on a, a day that they don't want to remember. So just remember this next time you guys have one of these patients, and uh, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.